Good afternoon, everyone. We'll just wait for a few more seconds for everyone to come in in today's webinar in financing your business. My name is Jesus Padilla. I am the Assistant Director here at the Florida SBDC at FIU. Some general housekeeping items. This is a recorded webinar, so in case if you have to step out, answer a phone call, don't worry. All participants will, will be receiving today's presentation along with the recording from today's uh, webinar. Definitely encourage you to like and subscribe our YouTube channel as we have a plethora of recorded webinars to assist you with your business needs. Throughout today's presentation, if you have any questions, strongly encourage you to put it in the Q&A. And throughout today's presentation, either myself or my colleague Gabby will be more than happy to answer those questions for you. This is a good opportunity for you to introduce yourself, what type of business you have, um, are you starting a business in the idea phase? Have already launched your business? Um, but at the same time, what type of capital are you looking for? As this will be more the engagement and the conversation for today's um, um, webinar. But also like that, it definitely helps us and helps us out to create the framework roadmap with our business consultants and the next steps after today's presentation as well. So definitely encourage you to introduce yourself and, um, and we'll be more happy to, to share best practices and, and good ideas. I definitely see some familiar faces. So hope all's well and nice to see you again. Um, in addition, uh, my colleague Gabby is gonna be providing some of the upcoming events that we have scheduled now until December, um, but I'm providing you some of the key workshops that would definitely benefit with your business needs based on what particular um, industry you're in. Okay. So once again, who we are, what we, what type of services we provide. Um, we're a team of specialized business consultants funded by the SBA as a resource partner. As a, we have a team of specialized consultants to assist you in access to capital, marketing, international trade, startup assistance, just to name a few areas of services that we provide. As a, we, we were recently recognized as the 2023 National SBDC of the Year. Since 2014, we have worked with over 8,000 small businesses that has resulted over 119,000 hours of consulting. But one of the key areas in this particular slide, it is that we have assisted our clients to gen um, obtain close to half a billion dollars in capital access. If it's grants, traditional um, in, um, investment opportunities, equity. So that falls under the, um, the umbrella. Since 2014, close to half a billion dollars worth of access to capital, we have been able to assist our clients to obtain. What is BizCap? It is a program, that, an initiative that we have been running since 2016, which is the Business Growth and Acceleration Program. It's focused on providing the hyper-local consulting, training, and outreach to small businesses in targeted commercial corridors. It provides an additional tool in the toolkit for businesses looking to grow but at the same time, to start up their business. Perfect, absolutely, uh, uh, Kara. Nice to meet you, and I love Boston. And uh, definitely, uh, this creates a good framework for your business venture and journey. So definitely, um, shoot us an email, and we'll be more than happy to connect you with your local SBDC over in Boston. But um, you could definitely like and subscribe our YouTube channel as we have additional tools for you to be successful in your journey. Some of the outcomes from the BizCap project, um, we have Canvas, we've gone door to door, met with small businesses. What are some pain points along with introducing some key resources for them to scale as well? Uh, we met with over 300 small businesses. As a result, over 300 businesses have attended or received consulting from our services as well. In addition, um, right here, some previous um, projects that we have done in the top left-hand corner in the Flagler um, Commercial Corridor here in downtown Miami, along with the city of North Miami Beach, just to name a few projects that we have done, um, working with the CRA, um, providing new initiatives and resources to small businesses in those targeted commercial corridors. This year, the BizCap um, project is funded by a grant um, by the SBA that focusing on the Congressional District 27. 
The Florida's 27th Congressional District covers the city of Miami, Key Biscayne, Coral Gables, runs through Kendall down to Cutler Bay. The three core activities um, that we aim to focus is the training, the outreach, the door-to-door -door canvassing, along the one-on-one -on -one business consulting, and most importantly, the data mapping and surveys of the small businesses located in Florida Congressional District 27. Our goal is to work with over a thousand businesses in this calendar year that includes the business consulting and trainings as such you're present here today. So once again, my name is Jesus Padilla. I am the assistant director here at the Florida SBDC at FIU. It's a great pleasure to get to meet you, but along at the same time, providing you the resources and the starting point to meet with our local access to capital consultants, along with key resource partners in the community to assist you to become bankable, obtain the necessary funds to start your business. So we'll be discussing the four key objectives. Think of it like the four key walls of a house. Review the questions to help you determine your business financial needs. The various finan uh, financing options for your business. Because no two businesses, no two industries are the same followed by what are the available financing options and the pros and cons of each of those financial options. So depending on what type of industry you're in, um, definitely encourage you to put it in the Q&A. So like that, Gabby will be able to take some notes because we have several industry-specific workshops slash webinars that focus in on capital, on financial side. So that definitely is going to help us out to give you some additional introductions, additional resources for you to become bankable. I want to start off with Penny for your thoughts, no pun intended. Uh, despite having an idea or being good at entrepreneurship, it is often difficult to start a business. Equity is a key element for a startup small business venture. You must explore the different financial options in order to provide the added equity for your business to survive. Before you start investigating what are the type of financial options that you need for your business, First, you need to assess your current financial situation. Once again, no two businesses, no two industries are the same. This often means creating a business plan with five years of financial projections. Not only based on how much capital you will need to expand the business, but also how your revenue stream will look in order to pay back the debt that you're financing. So based on the show of hands, um, or you can put in the chat, you know, yeah, your name, um, have y'all created a business plan? Or if, if so, how was that experience like? Um, or do you need some assistance in developing a business plan? So just please put in the chat so like that um, we'll take those notes and, um, and assist you with the next steps. Hi, Ignacio, how are you? Hi, Leigh, how are you? Yes, it was stressful, glad it, perfect. That's, that's great. Yep. And, and the good thing is with a business plan, it is like a living document. So it definitely navigates based on where the current market is taking you on that front, but it's always updating it because industries might change, clients might change, their behaviors might change from one year to the next. And per perfect, okay. Yeah, um, Kara, just uh, shoot, um, shoot us an email. We'll, we'll be more happy to provide you the, the resources, information, how to develop a business plan. Yes, I know. I know it's very stressful in in that area um, in regards of um, developing and planning a business plan. But my recommendation is don't let the idea of or the fear of developing a business plan delay you from starting your business. So just put everything on on, on paper and start building out that branch to see what sticks and what doesn't stick. Perfect. Yep. So these are some key questions you should be asking yourself while you're looking and pursuing capital. It is, what is the nature of your need? It, how urgent is your need? How great are your risks? And what state development is your business? Once again, if it's starting in the idea phase already fully established, for what purpose would the capital be used for? What is the state of the industry? Is your business a seasonal or cyclical? How strong is your management team? And lastly, how does your need for financing mesh with your business plan? These are some key questions, not only to be asking yourself, but I'm giving you the homework before the lenders 
or the teacher, if the teacher gives it to you, um, the lenders will be asking you. So definitely I want you to be well-prepared, confident, um, so that you're able to own the table when it's time for you to ask for capital to the respective financial institutions. So if this is a good opportunity for you to start estimating your SOC cost, determine how much capital you need to start with, you must estimate the cost that is associated for the first few months. Some of these expenses will be one time, such as the fees to incorporate the business, the price for signing um, the signage of your building, or some will be the recurring costs like the utilities, the inventory, the insurance. So this is where you're able to start analyzing your, your categories into the fixed and variable expenses. The fixed expenses will include the rent, the utilities, the administrative costs, while the variable expenses will be the inventory, the shipping, the packaging, any commissions, or any other costs are associated with the product or service that you're offering. Okay, I have a question here in regards, how do you know if you want to go for the, pro, for, how do you want to know if you want to go to the for-profit versus non-profit route? It's based on the, the market, if it's dictating um, what is the your mission, what is your vision, along with the value proposition that you want to provide to the community. Then by doing so, oftentimes you've had clients that have a, a nonprofit on a for-profit component or vice versa. So if I am in the food industry and for it, you want to do a nonprofit component, it will be like rounding up to the next dollar. Those funds will be providing for Meals on Wheels or, or sponsor meals for the elderly or anything along those sorts. So there's different options in how to know which is the best route to go to. My recommendation is to touch base with an accountant to see which is more viable for your need. But once again, what type of service or products you're going to be offering on the nonprofit versus the for-profit route. This is where you're able to start ana analyzing what type of financing are you looking for? Is it more the debt financing or the equity financing? The debt financing is borrowing money that must be paid over a period of time with interest, while equity, it is raising money in exchange for a share of the ownership of the business. So there's two different sides of obtaining financing, but is which is the best alternative route for you? In debt financing, it is uh, repaid over a period of time with interest, the lender doesn't gain any ownership interest in the business and is often secured by company's assets or the borrower's personal guarantee. So this is definitely an opportunity for you to have a good collateral along with a little bit of skin in the game. Um, so, so right there, you're showing the, the lenders that you, you are also obtaining some of the risk in, in that regard as well. The debt financing, it, some of the sources will be including the banks, the savings, your personal savings, additional personal loans, credit unions, SBA guarantee loans, state and local government programs, along with family, friends, and former associates as well. Well, in the equity financing, it's raising money, once again, in exchange for the ownership of the business. Most of the common sources of this form of financing is venture capitalists. It's private equity investors that provide high, you know, capital to companies exhibiting high growth of potential in exchange for equity stake. So definitely that's a good opportunity for you, but it might be a little bit high interest, uh, high cash burn rate, but some of the um, VCs, they look for 20X return investment. So that's one opportunity for you to do a, a full self-assessment of the valuation of your business to make sure that if you want to go this route, how much piece of the ownership um, you would like to give up. Okay. When seeking funding, are you financing for the five-year projected of the business plan? Yes, correct. Because that definitely helps to create the narrative of the growth of the business with the next five years, with the capital that you're seeking, how you're able to repay and also um, growing it by X, X amount um, growth. Okay. 
In the equity financing, it could be your family, friends, relatives, customers, industry colleagues, also the subject matter experts in that particular industry that could definitely help you and navigate through those waters of that industry to get a, a bigger market share. This is one of the key areas of today's presentation. It is your credit history. Um, this is definitely have a good and be transparent, you know, with your lenders based on your credit worthiness. It is understanding how much is your, your credit, any debt obligations. Um, it's one of the five C's of capital um, to get funds. If you don't have a good credit history, my recommendation is in, in work on it so that it definitely helps you on the term rates, also with the um, interest rates as well. So definitely, um, if you're having issues with your credit, shoot me an email and I'll be more than happy to connect you with some of our resource partners here in the community. That could definitely help you uh, with, with that regard to help you to become bankable on that front. Okay. The collateral is another form of um, security in which can be used to assure the lender that you have a second source of loan repayment. Assets such as the equipment, buildings, accounts, receivable, and inventory are considered possible sources of repayment if they, um, if they can be sold by the bank for cash. Collateral consists of the assets that are usable in the business as well as personal assets that remain outside the business. So this is a good opportunity for you, once again, to provide skin in the game. The short-term and long-term financing, it all varies based on what is the terms, what is the, uh, what is the intended usage of the funds. The short-term, it is um, funding in regards of less than one year, which is, think of it as a small bridge, like a bridge loan. Um, but it has higher interest rates and doesn't fulfill any long-term investment plans, but it's something just to plug the, plug the hole right now. Um, it's definitely would be you know five thousand dollars, so I could repay one of my my obligators, and and then it would be paid out in four years. But I need something like now just to get everything squared away. While the long-term financing, it is something of over one year. It could be purchasing a building or heavy machinery that is X amount of dollars that is going to yield more return investment through the length of the maturity date. So once again, the long-term financing provides stability, but the interest paid over time is a lot higher. So now we'll be talking about some of the various forms of loans. We'll be talking about the three, the three major loans, which is the, um, the 504 loan, the 7A, the micro loans. So the types of loans and debts available to you and the terms of those loans will typically determine your business organization, whether you're an LLC or organization of some other kind, but also industry-based and also um, what's the, the development stage of your business as well. The 7A loan, it's a, a, one of the SBA's most common loan programs, includes financial help for small businesses with special requirements. It is used for real estate when it's part of a business purchase. It could be used for working capital, refinancing a, a current existing business debt, but also purchase it for equipment, supplies, furniture, and fixtures. And it's revolving funds based on the value of the existing inventory, the receivables, um, you could also establish a new business or assisting in the business acquisition, operation, or expansion of the current existing business. So you're using the funds to continue to grow the business on that front. While the 504 loans, it is more the major fixed assets to promote the business growth and job creation, such as like the machineries or the actual, off, um, excuse me, the buildings. And it's, the construction or purchase of the existing business, uh, buildings, the land, new facilities, or the machinery or the heavy equipment. The micro loans, the, um, some of the micro loans, um, they, they're loans up to 50,000 to help small businesses and certain not-for-profit chakra centers for startup and expand. 
but this could the micro loans could be used for working capital inventory furniture but not for paying existing debts or purchase real estate um if you're interested to meet with some of our local community based organizations don't worry shoot me an email we could schedule a meeting um based on what um, wait based on the amount that you're seeking i'll be more than happy to connect you with our resource partners secondly um i know gabby put in the chat, if your business is located here in um in Miami, we're having a resource fair on October 25th in Coral Gables Public Safety Building. Strongly encourage you to register if you're located here in Miami, because some of our resource partners who provide microloans will be there. They're the CDFIs. So that's a good opportunity for you to get to know them and see what additional resources, initiatives, and programs they have available. As well, so definitely I encourage you to network with them, and um, and we'll be more happy to connect you with them. Yeah, what type of loan should a consultant um business seek? A consulting business seek. It all varies. What is the actual purpose of the of what you're seeking? Is it more the equipment? Is it more for marketing? What type of business loans are you looking for? Um, and then um, right there, the consult our team will be able to guide you based on your capacity, um, the debt obligations, um, so you could uh, repay back the loan, and along with the character as well, if you're missing any payments in, 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 your, in your other debts as well. The venture capital is the additional equity financing that uh, addresses the funding needs of the entrepreneur's ventures for reasons of size, the assets, the stage of development, but cannot go for the traditional route. So this is more the non-traditional route. Is generally made in cash in exchange for shares and play an active role the company invests in. So think of it as in Shark Tank. The good thing is that um, you could raise as much money as you want. You don't need to repay or take an interest rate. You don't need to attach any collateral for raising the business venture, the, the venture, um, the raising venture capital, and it could help your business grow. And it's generally guaranteed in long term. And the venture capitalist will own a stake of your business and might at times, depending upon the amount of investment, make some controlling decisions. Always have to be mindful of, of, of their thoughts. Uh, so raising capital um, amounts to giving up a piece of the, of the business, shares of the, of the business venture. Well, the angel investors, they are... High net worth individual investors who seek high returns through private investments in startup companies. They see companies with high growth potential, just like venture capitalists, but um, a, so a solid business plan, it aids the um, angels in assessing the company's value. They typically invest in ventures involved in industries or technologies that they are personal, uh, personally familiar with. Okay, um, if um, in regards to venture capital uh, resources, uh, shoot me an email and I'll put my email address in the chat and I will be more happy to connect you with some of the, the VC resources that we have available here in Miami. Okay. Well, there, you know, when there is the advantages and also the disadvantages, one of the advantages of an angel investor, they may provide um, that you need the capital right at the startup stage. They generally agree with investment, flexible investment agreements in terms of the traditional sources of funding and add business acumen to your venture. They get to get assist you, help you out with the information. They may agree to invest in your business, even if it's a risky venture, but they, they often look um, ready to look beyond the financial return. So think of it as your guardian angel guiding you through the good and bad, the ugly, but as another um, serves as a mentor as well in um, in your venture. On the other hand, the angel the investors generally are not ready to make follow-up investments. They can be costly at times and want higher returns on their investment. And they may want to be involved in the decision-making process of your business and, may be and you may virtually lose control. It can be a difficult task to find. Angel investors are usually operate behind the scenes. 
the crowdfunding, this is one of the earliest routes of starting up your business in regards to getting funding um, in the community. It's uh, crowdfunding platforms like Kickstarter, um, Fundable are also a great way for building brand awareness and testing the market of your business idea amongst investors and consumers. Me personally, I am just like you. I am an entrepreneur. I have several um, side hustles and this is one avenue where I started funding for my business venture, crowdfunding. And these are the four ways to do crowdfunding. It is the don donation-based, donors give money for nothing in return. It's for the general public. Equity-based, it is um, providing funds in return for shares in the business. Debt-based, it is investors are repaid with interest and rewards-based, those who donate will receive the products or service in return. So for example, if I want to start up a t-shirt making business, like, hey, whoever wants to um, um, provide me some funds so I could launch my business, uh, we could agree upon one of these four areas. Donation base, hey, Jesus, you're, you're such a great guy. Let me give you $5. While equity base, it is um, I want to buy 10 shares, which is $5 each. So I want to buy $50, $50 worth of shares in your business. While debt base, it's for... For every five dollars I give you, I expect ten dollars in return. Rewards base: anyone who donates will get the free shirt once I fully launch. So the different avenues how you're able to provide the service and obtain funds as well, but get to know more about the market, start um, building that brand awareness as well. One of the common areas it is the uh, family and friends. Um, it's an easy source for financing for your business. Sometimes if you're lacking strong credit history or don't want to deal with the uh, meeting with the lenders, they turn to family and friends to finance their business. This is a great way to have easy access to get cash with lower hoops to, to go through. But on the flip side, if your business fails and you're late in repaying the money, you, there might be some conflict with your family and friends. So Thanksgiving will be really uncomfortable on that side. But you must decide whether you want the financing from family and friends as a loan or investment or a share of the business, because after all, it is an agreement as a business transaction. So just be transparent, have it in writing, because um, you know families will uh, will fight over over if the transaction doesn't go through. So we're going back towards the actual recap of today's presentation. It is. I want you to determine your financing needs. Um, your first step in looking for, for your business. It is determining the financial needs, the various financial options for your business, what are the financial options, and the pros and cons of each of those options. Once again, no two businesses are the same, no two industries are the same. So you have to do a due diligence based on which lender is best suited for you. Sometimes if you're in the manufacturing business, this lender doesn't focus on manufacturers. They focus more on food. You're not going to be going to them. You want to go to a lender that provides lending and vice versa. So definitely do research based on which is the best lender for you that will be able to have that appetite to provide you the funds. So these are the next steps slash the homework that I want to have with you. Um, so we could definitely create that roadmap for you. Analyze the financial situation of your business. What, what is the determination of your financial needs? And be realistic with the exact amount. Be attainable. Do not say, I, I think I need X amount of dollars. No, it's I need $50,000, $10,000 is for marketing, twenty five dollars is for operations, and $5,000 is for ABC. By being realistic, that's it definitely helps to create the narrative and it's attainable versus um, an unskilled and a random number just made up by the thin air. Create the solid business plan. This is where we're able to captivate the reader's interest and by continue reading um, for any potential lenders, business partners, investors. So this is a great way for you to approach for them for financing by developing a solid business plan. If you don't know where to start or don't know how to create a business plan, don't worry. Um, Shoot us an email, we'll be more than happy to provide you the resources and connecting you with the appropriate consultants to assist in the business plan. In regards of meeting with the lender, um, is it better to go 
in knowing what type of funding you want or learn what options they have or would recommend. It's a mixture of both. You have to do a due diligence by knowing what type of business loans do you need and what is it for. So like that, you're able to see what are some of the term rates because you could have the Goldilocks approach. Lender one has $50,000 with this um, interest rate. Lender number two has 5,000 with a higher interest rate and the other one is just perfect. Because all you're seeking is $2,000 with this term. So it all varies. So if you have a good understanding slash research of what are some of the products that they're offering and what you need, but at the same time, you have to be realistic. How is your credit? How What's your collateral? You have the capacity to repay the, um, repay the debt. So that definitely plays into a factor as well. So it's a good opportunity for you to have a seat at the table. Even if you're not ready to obtain the funds from that lender, at least when you're able to hit the minimum threshold to become bankable with them, now you're able to own the table because you already know what you need to accomplish, like those milestones. Because sometimes some of the lenders, they might ask for a business plan. Some would just look for the last six months of of, of, of your um, financial statements. So that varies. By having a good conversation with them, um, that definitely helps and enhances the conversation because they already get to know you and you get to know them. So that creates more of a building trust um, relationship. Evaluate your financing options that is best for a venture. Evaluate the pros and cons of each of those options and decide which is best suited for you. Just like us, what I mentioned a few seconds ago. By approaching the lenders and investors, after you decide which is the best route for you, decide if you decide on a loan, review how your business venture is bankable with the terms and focus on the five C's of credit. The five C's of credit is the character, the capacity, B capital, collateral, and the conditions. So definitely have that ready for you, having the piece of paper in your back pocket. So when the lenders are speaking to you, you already know how to answer those questions. And most importantly, this provides you the opportunities for growth. Once you have secured the financing, now you can concentrate on using it to best expand your business. One avenue that we always say it is, okay, we got your capital, what's next? How else can we help you? You need to hire someone to start selling your pens or your products. That's how we're able to continue the conversation. So one, you could repay, but at the same time to grow the business as well. So um, if you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to put it in the in the QA or in the chat. And I'm more than happy to, to answer those questions for you. But I know that it was just a, a brief um, conversation because I want to make sure that one, I'm able to answer any questions that you might have. But I want to enhance the conversation with our consultants, with our team, with our partners um, in the community that provide the funding options so that you're able to own the table when the time is right. So if you have any questions, um, put it in the chat or in the q and I'll be more happy to answer those questions for you. Uh, this is a good opportunity for you to introduce, um, to connect with us. Uh, visit our website, which is bizcap.miami. You could um, visit us, uh, follow us on social media, but strongly encourage you to like and subscribe our YouTube channel as this would definitely will be your 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 best tool in your toolkit for for your business growth and definitely if you know of any entrepreneurs in in your ecosystem that is looking for business growth don't hesitate um by all means share our information with them and we'll be more happy to assist them as well because our goal is to provide the no-cost business assistance to you to create the economic impact in the community. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay. Correct, yeah. So when you speak to lenders, the five Cs is what you focus on because it is the five Think of like the five main bullet points and how you're able to to communicate. Because sometimes like, oh, like I was late for for these payments. Oh, well, that's your it's a, it is on paper because of lack of character, but you you don't want to be discredited because it could be life happened or something was going on in that particular time period. So by having a conversation with them, it shows like okay, you have the capacity to repay back and it's just like a one-off item. 
So definitely having that, having the five C's in your pocket and how you're able to defend yourself definitely helps. Um, that's why in um, next week we're having a um, what your lenders need, um, what you need, what your lenders need you to know, so that you're it's unveiling the curtain. So now you're getting the homework before the teacher gives it to you, so you're able to fully have the psychology, the lingo, and the knowledge of what the lenders will be asking you. So definitely helps you and goes more in depth on that front of the five C's. Okay. And um, if you're interested to, to attend next week's uh, webinar, um, just give me a thumbs up. And so that if it's a cumulative, I'll be more happy to register everyone uh, from today's presentation. And um, for, so that it makes it a lot easier for you. So it's not a problem. So if you want to give me a thumbs up, I'll be more happy to do so. So, cause we're keeping tabs. Yes, yeah, so if you have a question, um, please uh, put it in the chat and I'll be more happy to transfer it. Perfect, okay. Yeah, yes, and then once again, all participants will be receiving. Perfect, okay, not sure. Okay, I got you. Um, yes, uh, so all participants will be receiving today's presentation along with the recording. So like that definitely helps and engages um, the next conversation with our colleagues as well, okay? So I wanna thank you all for attending. I wanna thank Gabby for being behind the scenes, but at the same time, I wanna thank all the participants in today's webinar. Um, looking forward to seeing you next week. And um, by the same time, everyone will be receiving all the different um, colleagues in the ecosystem for funding, for funding options. Um, how do we find uh, crowdfunding and angel investor? Um, Allison, shoot me an email. And, um, and I'll provide you the, the list of uh, potential crowdfunders and angel investors based on the um, based on the industry that you're in. Thank you, Kara. All right. Thank you all. And I'll be looking forward to you at the next events. Take care, everyone.